I was chatting up a girl at Starbucks earlier today, and afterwards it got me thinking about relationships, how we interact, how we socialize, how we go through this back and forth dance of trying to figure out who this other person is, what they like, whether or not that lines up with what we like and who we are. And then even after you get past that point, which is kind of like this awkward social interview phase where you're going through several different dates or interviews to see like, is this somebody that I'd like to spend an extended amount of time with and, you know, possibly take the relationship one step further in any sense, whether that's going so far as to make it serious, live together, who knows, maybe even to the point of marriage. But it's this interesting back and forth while you're trying to piece together who this person is to you. And then even after you get past that point, if it becomes serious, then you really find out who they are because whether or not we try or whether or not we want to admit it, we all kind of wear a mask as to how we feel we should present ourselves and then eventually we let down our garden defenses and it's like, okay, that was kind of who I was. Here's the real me. It's something that I feel games never really get quite right because almost always you're ending up in a situation where you are socializing, you get a meter to a certain part, um, and then you're figuring out what they like. Those parts make sense. There's a lot of gift buying. Actually, maybe they're a little bit more true to life than I thought. <laughs> Take that for what you will. And you build it up to a point that then, depending on the game, maybe it leads to marriage and then all of a sudden a kid just magically appears through the magic of video game love. And it's this weird sort of dynamic that follows a similar theme in the games that I can think of that come to mind, like uh, The Sims, like Harvest Moon, um, eh, even to an extent uh, games like Fire Emblem, the same sort of relationship building. Although Fire Emblem I find really interesting because it's not just, I give you a gift, I talk with you. I mean, mind you, the setting is almost always set in a war, so part of the relationship building is if you have these characters fighting beside each other, it's more just like, hey, you got my back, or wow, you saved my ass, or geez, if you hadn't been there with the shield meter built up, that arrow would have killed me. I think I like you. Which makes a lot of sense, you know? I can understand having a fondness for somebody who literally takes a bullet for you. That's, that's pretty special. Maybe not exactly first date material, but special. But I was thinking, what if we took it one step further? What if we tried to make it a little bit more true to life? Not saying that you have to have any sort of relationship system, I guess you would call it, be 100% accurate, because... I'm not even sure if you can represent 100% accuracy in anything in a game just because people as we are, we're so dynamic and varied and random and weird and strange. I'm not even sure you could account for every single variable, but this is a gimmick that I thought would be interesting depending on how it's utilized and at the very least have some, uh, some relatability and definitely some humor. So, for example, and this is just an easy one to peg off the top. For female characters, what if you had it so there would be randomized moments where they would just be kind of irrational? Not, not tagging women on this one, but, you know, just emotionally irrational for no reason. And you couldn't quite figure out what it was. Or, you know what, to make it even... <laughs> To make it even more true to life and more specific, there would be a set period of time within each, using a game like Harvest Moon where there's different seasons and months, there would be, let's say, a two-day period within each month where if a character normally enjoyed certain topics of conversation, enjoyed certain gifts, and enjoyed certain outings to build their meter towards liking you, within that two-day period, none of that would work. It just, all the things that should work don't, or they have randomized or differing effects, or negative effects, or maybe she's just like all over the place. For example, maybe if like you gave her uh, a, a diamond that you found in the mine, she's like, wow, I really like diamonds. Most of the time, that day she's just like, Oh, I see. Is, is that all I am to you? I'm just I'm just something to be bedazzled with jewels. And you're like, whoa, where the hell is this coming from? But then at the same time, you gave her a flower. She's just like, that's so great. When any other time of the year, she'd be like, this is a weed. Why did you bring me a weed? There's tons of them on my front lawn. This is no different. Just for the sake of humor. <laughs> I think that would be great. 
At the same time, you could do something for the male characters where there might be moments where they just, you know what, something happens and they take it well. They bottle it up, but they've got this meter. And once it hits a certain point where you've dealt with so many stressful situations or you've held back from, say, like a sort of trigger event like Mass Effect where it's like you could tap a button now and do something instantaneous, Paragon or Renegade. You don't do that. But if you don't do one of those, you build up this meter. And eventually that meter will fill to the point that something will happen and your guy will just lose his friggin' mind and go angry, like super Hulk ragey. Not saying he like punches holes through walls, but maybe he does. Or he's just irrational. Or any socializing you do for the next period of time is going to go horribly bad. Or I don't know, maybe there's a fight club in town and suddenly... That rage meter gives you an extra boost, so maybe you should go fight back there so you can get some extra money and build a chicken coop. I don't know. Something like that where you add in these little social cues and dynamics and cliches because, huh, this is going to sound redundant, but as cliche as cliches can be, they exist for a reason because they're true. They happen. They're a common thread that we can all find in different parts of our lives. But in as so much as how relationships work in games, these are like some very basic ideas. And I think I'm actually going to like sort of sit down and really jot some notes on this idea because I think we can go a little bit deeper. Again, if only to add a little bit more relatability and at the very least some humor to the, I would say, fairly common dynamic for how relationship building works in games. Because for the most part, they're all... Very, very similar. And I think even adding in just one of those would set that apart from the rest enough that it would be talked about. Then again, maybe it already has been. Because, I mean, again, in terms of relationship building in games, my experience is very limited. Like I said, it's Sims, it's Harvest Moon, it's Fire Emblem. Those are the only ones that come to mind. And, well, no, hold on a second. I guess Mass Effect and Dragon Age count as well. But perhaps this idea that I have has been done in a game already or in one that's coming out or one that was made years ago and I just never heard about. I don't know. But if you have or if you have any ideas you'd like to share on the topic, by all means, let me know in the comments below. And as always, my name's Rye. You guys take care of yourselves.